we're in the middle of nowhere on the outskirts of Basingstoke to meet a guy called Paul who really does have quite a broad church of vehicles and he's recently rented this farm building the perfect place to stash a load of cars he does like his pick and mix he does like a really really broad array of, of, of vehicles and that's why I had to come and share this with you so yes this is a car cave episode and this is proudly supported by EBC Brakes. This is Paul Harding. This is your shed, Paul, and your chair. Yeah. Full of keys. Lots of keys. <laughs> Before we delve into this eclectic cave, because there's some great cars in it, including some engine swapped cars, which I'm particularly intrigued by. How did this all begin? I had a VX220 Turbo, one that's like out there, but not that exact one. Yeah. And I sold that to start basically my first house, which was an old shop. And I bought it from my mother-in-law and my friend that owns the red toy Mac and Amiibo that's out there, yeah. bought it together. And we converted a old shop into two flats. When I did that, I didn't have any money. So I bought a Mark I Polo in orange from a chap that worked for Performance VW magazine and I swapped it for a pack of fruit pastels. Fruit pastels? Fruit pastels. It was sat in his parents' driveway and he just needed it out the way. I got it back, it's pretty knackered. I bought a welder for 70 quid on eBay. Um, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have sat and done it in the rain, but I did it in the rain under umbrellas. There's various <laughs> wedge on my parents' driveway, which is a single driveway, put it back together, got it back on the road, took it to a few shows and stuff, ended up selling it and bought that. And, then, and that is an early Carmen gear. So that's a 59 low light Carmen gear. Wow. I do have the rest of it. Still at my parents. <laughs> is it? So it was originally, I had it as my car. I always wanted, it's one of my dream cars. And I always wanted one. Yeah. And I brought one and it was in a sort of little bit of a sorry state, but it wasn't too bad. And I decided I wanted it as my wedding car. And I tried to be really in advance. It's way before I had the business or anything like that at all. And I wanted to try and sort it so it was restored perfectly. Okay. And you're... Your business is repairing cars or selling cars? Or? Repairing, a little bit of selling, but mainly kind of repairing, but restoration, normal service. I actually opened it up to look after normal people. Yeah. And I wanted to treat normal people and look after just a normal Focus, Camber, whatever. That's what it was originally about. Yeah. But when it opened, I had, because I like obscure cars, I had lots of obscure cars turn up, <laughs> which I never was expecting. But this is not your garage. This as is in, not my garage. This is not your work garage. This no. is your this is hobby. Yeah, this is storage for a few customers' cars, place for my stuff. And all my friends go, have you got a space? Can I park my car in there, please? Thank you. How many cars have you got? 30, it was 38 if you include, I've got like a Fiat 500. It's like a little courtesy car and a Mini. And then my wife owns a Boxster S987 and Mark 7 Golf. So if you include both her cars, then it was 38 in the family in total. I, so. think, I think we need to start walking around the vehicle. And there's a motorbike. Let's, let's start oh, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. let's start with the motorbike because it looks phenomenal. So this is a Honda Benley. Okay. Um, it's a 125. Yeah, four strokes. We've got an exhaust on either side. It doesn't sound too one two five. It's got a bit of an exhaust note to it. Yeah, uh, and it's been heavily absolutely modified. nut and bolt restored. Every single part of the suspension, the engine, the brakes, every single thing has been taken apart and been restored on it. And 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 actually, I know we we, we did talk a little bit about the low light Carmen gear. Are you going to finish this car? And the problem I've got is if I sold it in its current state, it's not really worth a great deal. No. And I'm so far into it now that I want to, to nut and bolt it. And I've yeah. got so many parts that I've built up over the years that I just buy little bits, as you yeah. do. Um, we did walk past it somewhat, but the Accord, that's an Accord, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Accord Type R. Why have you got it? I've got it as a part of investment. The, I've always loved them. I had one uh, a few years back. Unmodified? Yeah, it's got, all it's got is, uh, it's got an exhaust on it and that's it. And it, doesn't have the catalytic converter because they're so valuable. It's one of the other reasons I bought the car because the catalytic converters are worth so much money that I managed to nearly offset a lot of the cost of the car from the catalytic converter. No one knows what it is. People on YouTube haven't owned them and put the prices up, but they've gone up a lot. Take and note, YouTube people. Yeah, they, they have gone up and they're so good fun to drive. You have to drive it. Anyone on it drives it. Just reminds me of 90s touring cars. Yeah, it's that's, kind of what it that, is. And it does drive like that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me, talk to me here. Uh, FDRX7, uh, it's a 93, and it has a 2J swap in it. So it's running 
Around 600, it shut the dyno down five, seven, eight because it burst a boost pipe and it was nearly three o'clock in the morning and it was minus four. And I decided I really couldn't be bothered to stand outside and fix it. So at the minute, yeah, it's, it's somewhere around the 600 bracket. So it's not rotary anymore? Not rotary, mm. no. Um, another reason, another RX7 outside, I saw it. Yeah, my friend's, friend's one. Yeah, one hundred and thirty thousand miles. This is not that. <laughs> okay, okay. So this is the this is the, the Frankenstein polar opposite of that. to that car. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That car is beautiful borderline concourse. This is just stupidly modified. I will. I don't like the carbon bonnet. This will get painted black. Okay. Um, the spoiler will come off. I've had it. For, I've had it a few years now, but I'm worried if I take it apart, it will never go back together. So I've just left it as it is. Uh, it's got all the fuel systems in the back. It's got a genuine Cusco roll cage in it. Um, it's got raised gram light wheels on it. It will have a set of these on it, ETA beaters, which I put on all sorts of stuff. What? The, because the, I, I, do you know what? For a weird, I thought they were, I didn't realize they were real wheels. Yeah. I thought they were sort of plastic. Yeah, all, all yes, yeah, so you've got. Um, display things, but they're real centers, aren't they? Yeah, um, ETA beaters off basically uh, Porsche. You've got BBS RFs in the center. BBS Magnesium E26s to the left, RS is below, then another set of them, and there's more of RS's behind So you're it. going to put Porsche rims on this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've test fitted them, they all work and everything. And I just, I'm not really a big wing type person. I kind of want to subtle it down a little bit. Yeah. It's a very fast and furious era car. That's why the values of these have just started to yeah, get mad. Yeah, crazy. When I dug through this, I had Japanese coins, Japanese history. Do you want me to open Let's have that? a quick look. We've got to have a look. Because also the other thing with the values is it is the is, is this thing's now worth stupid money as well. Wow, that that really fits well. It does fit well, yeah. It's only this little bit here that sticks up. But uh, yeah, other than that, it, it does it does fit well. And the reason I brought it is it's yeah. got a proper subframe. This isn't it's not hacked together in somebody's garage. Yeah. So this is a tech tube on it, it's got a tech two subframe in it. The guy that bought it spent a small fortune on it, bought it all across from um, various bits from the States, various bits from Australia. Um, and it'd be never reused it. It kind of just, kind of just sat. It Engine didn't... sits right in the middle of the wheels, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it drives really, really well. Does really, it? Really, really well, yeah. It's got an R154 gearbox, which is effectively out of a Supra. It's not the six speed, it's the five. And it looks so different to that yeah. right next to it. Yeah, yeah. This is what I like about you. This is why I wanted to do this car cave, because you're not just a, a VW guy no. or just a Japanese guy. You're actually, you've got a hell of a weird mix, actually. It is a really obscure mix yeah. yeah originally i kind of was i kind of became pigeonholed as a vw guy for a long time but my first car was an, an Nova sr and i loved that i had that for years i'm a bit partial to a mark ii golf i yeah. know you there's another one outside i saw another yeah, one there it is. it's base model c yeah it's as as poverty spec as poverty comes you, yeah you can't get any lower than this it has no head unit it's just got the wires clipped into the back of where the head unit should go has oh, no yeah. rear seat belts, it has blanks where the seat belts go. It's got plastic roof liner because oh, yeah. they all fall down. It's got a plastic roof liner, which is all factory. Base. Yeah, like one wing mirror. So you've got a blank this side. And oh, you, yeah. You've, you've got a mirror. Yeah. No side of Peter, just a badge. Yeah, of course. It has low. No aerial because no, aer no, no factory. radio. Yeah, all of, all of its factory. It's literally as poverty spec as you can get a Mark II Golf. What's the deal with this then? So. This, a friend of mine brought this. Um, it's got 40,000 miles, I think it's got on it. Uh, it's it's low, low, very low miles. Uh, I say rare color, it is rare color in polar silver. My friend built this. Um, it was completely standard when he brought it. And yeah, it's now got an R32 swap, um, LSD. Oh, just casual, just yeah, an R32. KWD3 suspension on it. It's a full sleeper. So, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's complete sleeper. And, and he's an engineer, so he built it a real stupid amount and went over the top on everything. Yeah, so, so you've, got the, you've, got, you've, got the, you've got the the big six in there. Yeah, and it's narrow track, so it's not a wide track as where well. a lot of them put a Mark III front end to keep it narrow, so this isn't. It's got modified uh, drive shafts, hubs. It's got, um, I think it's got Mark VI or Mark VII brakes on it that have been modified. Wow. It's got so many bits to it. I've always said that I really hope he doesn't ever die because I, I wouldn't know how to fix it. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> so, so yes, standard wings, the, bo the body is yeah, totally as Completely, was. it could go back to stand. Nothing has been cut when you built it, nothing. So how does it drive? Really well, it does spin up the front, it sounds good. It yeah. does spin up the front wheels. I, I haven't used it really, I've had it a while and I've kind of been doing a few bits to it here and there. The wheels are just rollers, they're just, they're just temporary. There's a set of RSs, um, which I've got to one side, which will go on it. So 
Engine swap R engine X7. Swap car. Engine swap engine Mark swap II car. Golf. And I know that this is engine swapped because yeah. this is one of the things that you, well, you, you brought this to the Late Break Show Live I did. on Tour. Second yeah. one. And uh, absolutely stunning. So real M3. Real M3. Okay. Real gen, non-sunroof black M3. Okay. Car. okay. Bodywork is immaculate. It's got running in stickers still in the window. It's got all correct stickers in the boot, the door, everything it should have. It's got all the correct stickers in it, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, under here is, uh, it's great. Uh, it's an LS3 Corvette it's got an motor. LS3 crate motor in it, yeah. Corvette. Did you do that? No, so it was done um, about nine years ago by a company called Dino Talk, and they did an amazing job on it. And it was at the time, it was a full interior car, and it's yeah. featured, and I remember it being featured. And um, it then got sold to the, the guy that I got it from, and he effectively turned it into a track car. Yeah. He pulled everything apart. I asked, do you have the interior? And he said, no, he said, you're gonna hate me. I put it all in a skip. And I was like, oh, put full Black Vader interior in a skip? He's like, yes. And I was like, oh, get it. Um, it was unloved, it had no OMT uh, when I got it. And then I've slowly been, because I've got, other 36s. I know we'll we'll have to talk about the other 36s. <laughs> I gather you like E36s. Yeah, yeah, um, and uh, yeah. Then this I kind of built back up through parts I had stashed away, various other things, and I've just been over a period of time putting it into kind of where it is now. There's a few more things I'd like to do. Yeah, um, I love the wheels. But yeah, I think yeah, they were originally bought for one of the cars down there. It drives well. It's on KWV3s. It's got um, fully complete welding cage. Um, LS3, uh, it's got quaish built rear end, um, it's got T56 gearbox in it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a proper built bit Sh of Show me, show me. Bit of kit. The, I am actually going to take this car out for a drive. I've managed to get insurance on it. And I can't wait, frankly, because I think it's going to be, uh, you, you said it is an excellent car to drive. Yeah, it drives completely different to a normal one because the engine's mounted slightly further back. Yeah. Um, the engine, as I'm told, is slightly lighter than a standard M3 engine. I can believe so that. So it's got a very different turn in because um, the rear end really helps it as it's got a, a, a proper built rear end in it. And yeah, it, it, it works. So it makes, it made 534 in a dyno. Um, Gosh, and it's, okay. So it goes well. Yeah, that's it doesn't it. need a supercharger, I don't think. That's a, this is a lot of space there, isn't there? Yeah. So yeah, that, um, that's not the wheels. I think it's like 444 at the wheels. Um, but it's good to use. It's good to drive. Um, it's reliable. It, I'm going to say it's actually quite economical. Really? <laughs> considering it's a, yeah, considering the size of the engine. Consider it's a V8. Yeah, yeah 6.2 yeah. V8. And, it, and it's, it's actually all right. I think because of six gear, it's so tall in it, yeah. you can cruise at like 1200 RPM on the motorway. Yeah. Well, briefly, let's summarise this then. So this is an, e, this is an M3. So that is. Quickly, so I'll, I'll go M3. So this is three litre. So this is a three litre, five speed, Avis Blue, M3. Okay. Two owner car, 92,000 miles. Um, M3, um, five speed, they're three, both three liters, non Evos. This one is, is rougher. Yeah. This one's nice, this one's rougher. I brought this as a guy was breaking it, and it was just too good to not save. Is this the last era um, of M3 for no traction control, no ABS? Yes, some of the later ones. So an, uh, an Evo, six speed, so a later, that's an early Evo, that one, but. This one. Yeah, that one is. Um, they did start to have traction control, so <coughs> that from factory would have had traction control, these two didn't. Okay, so this one's a convertible. So this is a convertible. Purple. No techno violet, so purple. So of its time, yeah. purple convertible. This is all completely nice, original car, standard, not mucked around with, it was a friend's car. This is not an M car. This is not, this is a 328 manual. Yeah. Um, it's not an M sort, it's just an SE, but it's got M sort bits in it, part of the front bumper. Yeah. I bought this for a donor vehicle, for the interior for the LF one. <laughs> Okay. It's so hard to find a black interior. They all come with grey interiors like these two do. Yeah. I couldn't, and before you'd find them anywhere. Yeah. But not now. And a friend of mine had a drift day. I was going to take it to his drift day. So we kind of like last it. minute lashed this together. So it's now got hydro handbrake in it, 
Um, it's got a seat from the back of the door to make seats. Various, it's got um, HSD suspension on it, um, a few other bits and bobs done to it. These wheels are meant to be for that car. I quickly bolted them on it to make it look a bit different. They're replica versions of the real ETA beaters that are on I everything see, else. I see, I see. But yeah, originally it was bought as a donor vehicle for that one. Brilliant. Paul, this is my favorite era of M5. Mine too. And um, I know that this is not your first, is it? No, this is my fourth or fifth. Is it really that many? Yeah. Oh, so, of, of just this E39 shape? Yeah, so I originally had one nine years ago. I bought it as a donor vehicle for an E30 that I had. Um, and I was gonna put the engine into it. Yeah. And I already had an E30 with a four liter V8 in it. And I was gonna put the five liter out of an M5 because at the time they weren't crazy money. Wow. Had 170,000 miles in it. I thought it was a donor car. I drove it back from Stoke. I loved it. And I kind of just ended up using that. And then I sold the chrome bumper E30 that I had and drove this. And I had it for like two and a bit years, not this exact one, but two and a bit years. I took it to Le Mans. I did drift days in it. Just beat the hell out of it. With 170 odd thousand? Yeah, never missed wow. a beat. It's good as gold. Good era. And then I kind of moved on and I went through different ones. And then my friend had one that had gone bonkers on. And I was like, if you ever sell it, I want it. And my friend Tim said, I'm going to sell it. Um, and he bought a new F-Type, the supercharged. Yeah. Um, and um, I bought it off him and my goal was to annoy him with the F-Type. So I supercharged it. I bought the kit in from America in my wife's handbag um, <laughs> and various other bags put in and we got stopped in um, customs and everything was checked out and they were fine. Ended up on the car. It was like about 600 horsepower. I then put a different pulley on it and drove it at 550 for like two years and it was good. I ended yeah. up selling that to the business and I always wanted another one. And I kept looking, I was wanting to be fussy. I really wanted, even though it's not really, really rare, I wanted this color, but I wanted caramel interior. And I just couldn't quite find one. And they sat at about eight grand yeah. for quite a while. And then Magnus Walker did a next big thing video. Chris Harris put a thing out saying how great, and the point, <laughs> I was like, no, shh, shh, shh. Yeah. No, I haven't got one yet. Stop and they telling started. people. And they started going up and up. And I blame up. Harris. And by pure fluke, then this came up, to own a car. It was, just on, it was just on Auto Trader as a generic advert. The guy that originally owned it had had it from literally a couple of months old when he bought it. This is when M Sport cars look good. This is a car, you stand in a petrol station, a bloke between 35 and 55 parks next to you and just goes, nice car, mate. That's what this is. That's what that's, yeah. You've put it here mostly for me to film with it. Yeah. It's normally out and about. Yeah, I often have it in my driveway, it's at home. Yeah I, want, yeah, I want to use it. But it's got, yeah, everything with it. It's a, it's a really good example. So it's a good one to keep yeah. when the things go up. Lady Dice back Audi convertible. I really like these. I yeah, love this I've shape. always loved them. Yeah. Even though they're worth nothing, I, I've, I've always loved them. I wanted an obscure colour. I looked for, I really wanted green with a green roof. Couldn't find one, found this. Yeah. Um, it was originally Australian import. Australian? Yeah, okay. got, if you look at the Audi stickers on the back of everything, all Australian phone numbers. Oh, okay. The only thing we can think of is like, a, it used to be if you were in special forces or a soldier or whatever, you got the option to bring a car back. It's the only thing I could think of. Of all the things in the world you could bring back, someone decided to bring an Audi AT. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. The... Okay. This is not yours. Is friend, right? Yeah, good friend's car. This is a DC2 Type R. Yeah. Um, Japanese import. Yeah, it's just, just one of my Seriously friends. desirable car now. Really desirable, yeah. Really, People really go desirable. crazy for these. Yeah. 100% of the do, yeah. Um, Especially as a beard, again, Japanese car, JDM one. And then not a Japanese import at not all. Not a Japanese import. Monaro VXR. Which I love. Yeah, great cars. I love them. Yeah, he's had a bad run with this, my friend. But yeah, his friend's, friend's car, hence are covered in dust. He's had yep. lots of problems with an engine builder, shall we say. Um, yeah, so it currently doesn't have an engine in it. Yeah. Mark 1 MX-5, people love these. Yep. People love them and they've, they're over 30 now, aren't they? I can't believe they're over 30 years old. Yeah. Yours? Is. Yeah. Not my favourite. Was my nephew's. But yeah, it's ultimately going to get sold. I won't keep it. This is, I looked at the, the cover and it says BMW M5, but it, it's not, is it's it? It's not, no. It's, it's quite funny that. that it's not. No, it's a, a, a Triumph under, you can lift it up. It's a... a Triumph 2000. Love this Mark II yeah. shape. Yeah, it is. Uh, gang, it's, a, it's, it's a two and a half. It's a two and a half liter. Oh, it is a two and a half. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I barely even know the bonnet. Gang, custom customer's car. A as having his house built, and uh, we're looking after it while he's having his garage done. But this is definitely yours, and you, I know yeah. it's it's right. It's, it is hidden in, in the corner. The poor things in the corner. And have you built this, or did you buy this as a sort of mid-built thing? So I brought this as a roof-chopped car. Yeah. 
but wasn't a Volkswagen, it was wide bodied actually. It had huge wide arches on it. So yes, I've done a hell of a lot of work to this car. That's a factory sunroof roof job. Yeah, it's got three different roofs to make that roof. Bloody hell. I-beam front suspension. Yeah, so the front, so the front is, is, the, is the selling point of that car. So the, I thought if I'm gonna build a Volkswagen, I'm gonna go all out. I'm not gonna yeah. do a head extender because most people do a 250 quid head extender and then bolt the beam further up. Yeah. This isn't. This is a 50s Ford I-beam, full dropped head conversion. It's got leaf springs, everything. You can lift the front up. Can front, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've welded all the fronts, all the fronts shaped. It's not just oh, yeah. space. So there's yeah. a company in America that make this kit. So then I, I, I brought the kit in. It's got Wilwood front, pot, um, front discs and pads. And this is gonna be it. lovely. And it, I've got full interior. I've got everything for it. The complete, all the glass, all the glass is sat down the end down there and it is glass the only and it's kind of got sidelined because it it, it needs well, some you money lost on paint. a bit of you... i lost total love for it yeah and, and it needs money on paint yeah and it's quite expensive obviously as you know with paint this is the first 911 you owned this is my first yes yeah. so this is an 83 sc three liter this is the this is the first one i bought you got three um earlier 911s yeah um, all of which are impact bumpers yeah so they've got 83 84 85. okay so this is the this is the three liter sc and then these two here are 3.2 carreras that's a 915 box which has got the same box as this an early box and this is a g50 box it's got the later more modern box in it right and this is the one this is your your baby, isn't this it? This is my baby, that's about, yeah, one, 84, one year only car. Yeah, that's... And this is, this is the only complete 911, isn't it? This is, yeah. this is... Yeah, it's completely... I mean, it looks stunning. So you, have you built this car completely? Yeah, I bought that car completely standard. Um, it was rusty. It was rusty to a point of, when I used to go out driving with my friends, I used to, if it rained, I had to come back, take all the carpets out of them and hang the carpets over the shower rail over the bath to let them dry because it got so wet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so it's all... a proper British 911. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, at least it leaked leak badly, yeah. Yeah, so the interior is, mm. it's got Cobra seats in there. It's got 76 Mark 1 Golf plaid in, inserts in the front and back. And then it's got Alcantara door cards. It's a brown dash car as well. So it's all factory brown dash car. It's nice. And then, yeah, it's got sort of my take on martini stripes and the black and gold. I love these. I think these are great. And yeah. the rims, it just, I think it works really well. And I'm not a big fan of red, but I think the red and the gold combo yeah, looks- Yeah, I love, I love the red. It was originally guards red. It's still in all purposes is guards red. Okay, so we've gone from air cooled to water cooled now. You've got a pair of 996s, yep. the lesser desirable 911. However, yeah. what is an undesirable 911 these days? There isn't one. These were, they were undesirable, the impacts. Yeah. These will flip flop because of the headlamps. That's These right. will become iconic. They will. And it's the first ever water called 911. And the first of anything yeah. has always got a bit. Eventually. So did you, I, I know that like with this, you sort of have a habit of buying one and then buying another one in quick succession and then yeah. one ends up sort of becoming a donut or. Yeah, exactly that, so identical. That... So this was a customer's car. We looked off for quite a long time. And he was a guy in his seventies, fully admire him, that he wanted to tick the track day boxes. And he did, he built this car uh, and it had a cage, seat, suspension, brakes, all sorts of stuff done to it. And he did track days and he drove, went all around England doing track days. Okay. He loved it, went, only had one set of tires on it. I still got the set of tires on this car now. <laughs> he didn't even use a set of tires out. <laughs> so, and, and he had a back brace, he had these seats in it with a back thing on it. Bless him. But I fully admired him. But the problem is because he had a dodgy leg and a bad back, he chose to build it on an auto. So this is a Tiptronic. Oh. Which means no one wanted a track car Tiptronic when he came to sell it. So he'd done all the right bits. Yeah. But the, it was the wrong spec. But the wrong spec. But so, he did it because he's 75. Yeah, and he wanted it for himself. Yeah, and he yeah, wanted yeah. to go and drive tracks, which I fully, and he did. So this is an early C2. This is a late C4. Yeah. Um, 3.4, 3.6. And this I is a manual car. I can see the yellow car. cage. Yeah, so the roll cage used to be in this in green. So yeah. I had it powder coated yellow, put in this, I put his, um, Porsche GT3 seats in it, and there's harnesses, I changed the brakes. I was gonna take the H&R coilovers off of this and put them on this, but I found that they're slightly different shape and size. So uh, I bought a set of, this got a set of BCs in it now, and this has still got the H&Rs on it. Yeah. I wanted to do the bumpers, but I thought I bought a black, I wasn't to part them side by side, which is really obvious now that this is like a gray black and this is a black, black. Black, black. 
Yeah. So, but I have got a, I've got the wing off of this car to go on this one. I've got the side skirts off of this car to go on this one. And then I've bought another GT3 bumper, which will go on the front of it. So, so cool. I've basically pilfered all the good bits off of this car to put on this car, then all the standard bits out of this car back into this car. So this car can then be sold and then I'll keep this Well, part fund the, the conversion exactly of this. Yeah, exactly. That. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I know you've got the early carbon gear. Yeah. But you sort of got, you've, you've got, you've got the trio of, of air cooled, haven't you? You've got yeah. a split bus and you've got, this isn't an oval beetle, but it's a very early big window. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a 59. So it's a small window, but semaphore car. Yes. Um, yeah, this is just after the oval. Yeah. So it's got the square back window, but still got smaller side windows, so yeah, thicker pillars, and, still got the semaphores and, and so dainty. Yeah, yeah so yeah. dainty. I yeah. just look, it's right hand drive as well. Right hand drive, and it's I think it's three owners and a hundred and I think it's one hundred and forty seven thousand miles. So this is originally this was originally bought for my wife. Okay. So when on our honeymoon we went round various places in California and got all parts for this. They're sat in our loft and we've kind of, with life moving on, we've never kind of put everything on it. But yeah, this is, this is, this we've is got lovely. loads of stuff. We've got so, all so carpet this made is, for it. So this was the car that your wife came to the wedding in? Yeah, so the, the original thing was, she comes with this to the wedding and I come in, in that. In the Carmen gear. This still works and that is in almost the same state as it was in 10 years ago. Can I just say what I really like about this? Is that it's standard ride height. Yeah. I've not I've mucked about you, with everything. You don't see a stock early Beetle anymore. No. Now the split bus, the, yep. the thing that I caught my eye is the fact that it's got rear corner windows, yep. but it's not a 21 or 23 window Samba. This is a Brazilian bus. Right. So a lot of, some people turn their noses up at a Brazilian bus because they can be made up of all sorts of random parts screwed together over the years. <laughs> this <laughs> isn't, this is a 68. So okay. it's an early Brazilian bus but it is bus underneath. So it's full split screen bus underneath. Yep. It isn't a mixture of 70s bits and various old Beetle, but it is completely a 68 bus. This makes me miss my split screen because mine was a 66, 67. So yeah. one of the last of the sort of the normal non-Brazilian ones. Okay, before we just go outside for a quick look round outside, I've got to ask Paul about the significance of the one series. I get it, it's a one series. Yep. They're pretty good. It's a one series coupe, which is the only one series I yep. like. Why? Okay, so this is a 1 Series 125 coupe manual. It's an SE spec. Most of the time you see them as uh, M Sport. There is a series of BMW SE cars. I've got another one out there, which is a 335 manual N54. Um, people don't really realise they exist. So this is like the ideal track spec. It is uh, it's a 125, so it's got the N52 engine, which you would get in a Z4. In a Z4, it's 265 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, it's the SI engine that you would get in the coupe or the later ones. This car is 215 horsepower, but it's the same engine. So okay. if you put a flash map on the Z4, you get 280 horsepower. You put the flash map on this car, you get 280. So effectively, this is 280 horsepower. It's manual. It's rear wheel drive. Small. Non-sunroof, it's full poverty spec, no heated seats, it's got literally auto lights, DAB, and that's pretty much it. I might have rear parking sensors, and that's it. <laughs> and then I've stuck a set of wheels that I had lying around, which are um, BBS CHs, they're replicas, they came on one of the uh, M3s actually. And I just put a set of coilovers on it, and other than that, I was gonna turn it into some kind of track car, and I just haven't had a chance. But it is the closest thing I've had to drive a modern car to some of the 36s. What a great idea. Okay, we're gonna come outside. Now, I know you said this right at the start mm -hmm. when I turned up, um, Paul, that not all these cars are yours. No. For example, that isn't yours. No. So it's nice. Yep. It looks good in white, actually. It is nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's not yours. Yeah, no, it's a custom, customer's car, but he's happy for me to have it and it be seen and things, so yeah. That is yours. Yep. Yeah, uh, T5.1 that was originally a combi. Yep. Uh, I bought it standard. It's a uh, family vehicle, and basically my wife wanted it as a camper van. So I fully converted it as a camper van, pop roof, bed, kitchen, all your lockdown essentials. It looks neat. Yeah, lowered it, wheels and various other things on it. But yeah, so it's, it's, that's a, it's a family camper because she moaned that the old ones were too old and wanted something modern with AC. And it's actually a really nice place to be. And if you get stuck in traffic by Stonehenge, you're cool. <laughs> so you've got that as your family car and yeah. you have a disco I for have, Land Rover. I have Rover. a disco for Land Rover, yeah, which is over there, yeah. Which is the towing warrior. Yeah. yeah. 
190, I'm noticing a pattern, look, you yeah. can't have one of anything. No, <laughs> they're all the way down here the same, yeah. So you've got 190Es, one is yeah. dropped on BBSs. Yeah, they're, um, yeah, dropped on um, BBSs and yeah, it's got H&R springs, which I've then cut because I wanted to be a bit lower. I've had this for a few years Okay. Um, and I love it. If you might notice the plates are the same, but the plate is now registered to the van, not this. Okay. This was, this was sat in here not being used. It seems to have a really nice plate without it being used. I transferred it. I just haven't taken it off the car. Both this one. Two litre autos. Yeah, both of them the same. This is a higher spec car, but this one I only bought for the interior. Okay. So I want to build one. After having this, I loved it. I would like to get another one. I've had two other 2.6s. I just haven't, they just haven't been a good example. So I've sold them on again. Uh, as where this is really rare. I've got this mid lockdown. This is the interior is full green, green everything. I really love the color. Yeah, so I want to take, well, I, I did at some point, I'll probably pull the interior out of this it. This reminds me that my local farmer, when I was growing up, his wife had one of these brand yeah. new in that color. Yeah, it's a really nice, it's a really rare color. Very farmery. But the blue one, I love it. It's just easy to It use. sits right. It's such a good classic daily. It's, it just a, it's, an, it's quiet, it's comfy, mm. a little one go in the back of it. It looks nice enough on the road, but it, it keeps you warm and the doors go clunk when you yeah. shut them. It's just a nice car. And it's easy to maintain. Yep. They're really good to work on. Yep. Bay windows. Yeah, bay windows. Uh, British spec. Both right-hand drive, both UK, so both rusty. Are they? <laughs> Less rusty now because I've done quite a bit of work to them. But yeah, so this was my original first camper. That kind of got us into the camping, having a bit of a go of it. Yeah. It's just got a pot roof to stand up in. We went as a family to the beach and bits and bobs and it's kind of quite cool. Uh, so then I bought this because it's a bit more practical. It's got the bigger roof. So this is a Devon. Yeah. Um, this is just a pot. This is a, this is a full Devon. Uh, it's unfortunately someone's painted it blue. It should be yellow, but it I've... was the last of the really windows. last this is an 80 so this has got a two liter this is a 1600 yeah. normal what you'd recognize an air cool engine this has effectively got an engine out of a t25 it's the it's yeah. the later kind of pancake style engine which makes it a bit more practical a bit more usable yeah but they're older there's no ac they're of course clunky, not. bumpy uh, i like them but she likes that now these i've got to talk about these quickly uh, yep. especially the red one yep. this is one of the reasons why i wanted to come and meet paul in his car cave because on the one hand he's got beautiful 911s engine swapped uh you know hooligan cars you've got a bit of a weird fetish for a, a 90s soft road uh the original the, everyone four. said it was rubbish when it was made yes come around here i want the camera i want i want you to come and have a look because it's the side profile of these original ones you forget how short they are because they were two door only when they first no, came out. When they first came out, yeah, but then they did a four door. Four That's door right. looks weird. It looks yes. too long. But look at it. It's really little. It's, it's a basically a Toyota Jimny. It, yeah. Yeah. So you you've had Jimnys, yeah. you've had other little Japanese four by fours, but you just fancied Yeah, and I sat with my daughter who's now seven at the time, she was five when we first started looking for one. Of what she likes, and she we were going through eBay of bomb bed, and she liked these. So I thought oh, it'd be easy to get a Rav Four. Yeah, I'll just go and get one for five hundred quid. No, no. I spent years to find one. Literally, it took me years. We're gonna go this way. Okay, um, VX two twenty turbo. It isn't yours, but I know you said you've had one in the past. Yeah, or yeah, two. yeah. I've, I've had, yeah, I've had one in the past. Yeah. And I think they're cool. I've always had a real yeah. thing for those, and it? it's stunning. That's car. one owner, five thousand miles from new. Same guy five, that owns five thousand miles. Ghetto 370Z. Yep. This is yours. That is mine. Yeah, uh, this is sort of beta 370. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You've, this was your daily driver for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, I've day driven it, I've used it, I, I've slid it about. Bumpers are held on with cable ties. Okay. It's used. It's used. But it's good fun. It's, it's a good car. Yeah, it's got wheels, coilovers, seat, that kind of stuff in it. This is the other one to the one in there. This, so this is a blue SE spec. This is a 335 N54 twin turbo manual. Yeah. But it's got a really nice interior. Red? Yeah. Yeah. So it's all got red interior. A bit of a sleeper because it's on sort of small Real wheels. Real sleeper. So this would be a perfect thing to make like an Alpina. Perfect. Which yeah. kind of was my plan with it, but things have changed and it's going to get sold. This is the crucial badge on the Mark II Golf here. Uh, this one isn't yours. This isn't. This is mine. This is, this is the customers that we look after. It's a very nice big bumper with a R32, R32 in it again, spot. yeah. Looks damn good, you know. Yeah, it's Almost really, really nice car, really nice car. He has some amazing accessories. This, this is, he's got bonkers, crazy rare accessories in it. There's loads of them in it, loads of them. Proper right. VW geek he is. Yeah, right. he's got a Mark One as well. These two, I mean, we can't walk past a Tommy Mack in an edition, yep. Evo. Um, it's a glorious thing. It's not yours. No, it's my best friend's. And 
I just wish he'd drive it more, frankly. You've yeah. told me he hardly ever uses it. No, he's had it about 13 years, and I would say in the last three or four years, I think he, we looked at the MOTs, he's done probably less than 50 miles on it. <sighs> Thank you very much to Paul from Super Duper Garage for showing us around his private car cave. I thought it was very much worthy of being featured. Thanks to EBC Brakes for sponsoring our car cave playlist. Maybe you've got an interesting car cave that you want to show us. If so, I will put an email in the description below. Thanks ever so much for watching as usual.